Uh, this is the lab for um, VR apps. In this, uh, let's go to action item number one. In this data center example, customer A has asked for two networks. One network for production application servers and another for development servers. Make sure server dev one and server app one can reach each other. So let's configure this VRF. Uh, let's go to router and uh, to router. Notice we don't have VRF, so I'm going to configure the first VRF in this router. Customer A, uh, route distinguisher, whatever number I want, because uh, we're using VRF Lite. Address family IPv4, and that's it. Now, show IP VRF will tell me that I have only one VRF. I'm going to uh, uh, join the interface Gigabit uh, 2 to the VRF, forwarding customer A, and then the IP address. No, shut down, then let's go to Gigabit 3 and we are forwarding customer A and then this is the address and let's issue the command again show IP VRF so I have one one VRF that has two interfaces related to it let's see the routing table show IP route VRF and customer A notice uh, that I have this routing table let me see what's going on oh I didn't not shut down this one not shut down Okay. it took a while now this is the routing table for the VRF and this is the global routing table completely different routing tables this is the VRF routing table this is the global routing table this is the VRF routing table this is the global routing table so let's see if, if the servers can reach each other Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Let's ping on the other side. Okay, they can ping each other. So let's go to action item number two. Uh, your monitoring server should be able to reach this customer network. Remember that your monitoring software runs on the global routing table and it should uh, access all customers. So this means that this server lives in this network, but this network lives in the global routing table, uh, whereas this server lives in the VRF. So how can you make them communicate to each other if they, if they live in, in separate domains, separate dom uh, routing domains? Uh, so we have several ways to make this happen, mainly three ways to make it. We are going to go with the first one using BGP. Okay, let's go to, to the router and I'm going to use BGP. BGP will help me to inject this route into this domain. So let's do that. Router, BGP, uh, address family, IPv4. So I'm, I'm using multi protocol BGP and I'm going to redistribute, connect it. That way, my BGP rib already has this uh, prefix, and this is the prefix that I'm going to inject into the BRF. So I'm going to use an access list, one permit, this prefix, and a roadmap that will be a sent. Uh, Prefix from global to VRF. 
match IP address one and I will create um, and now I'm going to import it using the VRF definition customer A and family IPv4 oh sorry import um, IPv4 unicast um, map and this send prefix to global VRF okay let's see how the configuration ends up so it looks like this and uh, I add this uh, this uh, standard access list and uh, this root map and this is the VGP configuration so let's see try p route vrf customer i and now we can see that this prefix is imported using pgp into the this vrf so this um this is a half part of the lab because this will help me so the servers will be able to send traffic to the monitoring server but the monitoring server still cannot reach them because there is no route in the routing table that help the router know where it is going to send these packets. If I issue this command in the global routing table, there is no way to know where to send these packets to. So I'm going to create these static routes to help the router know where to send these packets. This network sleeps in gigabit three and this network sleeps in gigabit two. So now the router knows where to send these packets and let's see. It should it should work now okay it is working i cannot reach the app one server and this is the dep one server it is working now so okay and let's go to action item dot uh, two dot one use um pull uh, this is wrong this should be uh two dot two the dot two three okay Action item 2.2, .2, use uh, policy-based routing to make this happen. Okay, let's let's use another method to make this work. I'm going to delete what I just did. I'm going to delete these networks just to make a point. Probably I will need them later on. Okay, so... Uh, They should be unreachable now. So uh, I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to configure policy based routing. I'm going to create an access list, an extended access list that will look for traffic that originates in these networks, which are the networks that belong to the BRF and that are destined to this network which is the network where the monitoring server lives and I'm going to create a roadmap that will match uh, traffic coming from the VRF to global uh, match IP address 101 and the, here is where the feature comes in this statement is what makes this happen. Set global. And uh, I'm going to apply this uh, root map to the interface that belongs to the VRF, like give it to uh, with IP, IP policy map. Uh, 
and this and interface g3 so the configuration is this notice that this is the interface that's go that goes to the vrf and we're going to match this traffic that comes from the vrf to the monitoring server and we'll send it to the global realm just as with this interface so it is not working now because i still need the routing uh, the, the static routes uh, if i issue this command the router has no way to know where to send those packets so i will have to create the route the static routes again for this method I am doing this again so you can tell that it is needed for every method. So I'll show it route. Now the now the uh, global routing table knows how where this where to send these packets. And if I issue this, it is working now. I didn't have to inject the route into the BRF. I didn't have to, to inject it. I don't have BGP now. I am using policy-based routing uh, in order to make this work. So let's go to action item 2.3. Use the feature BR, BRF uh, receive to make this happen. Okay, so I'm going to delete the PBR. I'm going to delete it because we are going to configure another method to do, to do this. So let's validate that. Okay, it is clear now. It is clear now. So what we're going to do now is using another method that is known as using the feature um, VRF receive. So let's go to now I'm going to configure gigabit one interface gigabit one. This interface belongs to the global routing table, and I'm going to enter this command. Go uh, vrf uh, select source and ip vrf receive uh, customer a. Notice what is the configuration. This is the configuration. Notice this interface belongs to the route, the global routing table. And with these commands, I am making this prefix lives live in inside the VRF. So notice it is a VC, it is seen as, a, as if it was connected to the VRF. Notice that the VRF only has gigabit 2 and gigabit 3 related to it. Not gigabit Ethernet 1, but using this command, these commands, I make I made this interface to belong to the VRF. So um, now we can test it. It is working. So notice that we still need to have this uh, dummy static routes in order to make this work. That's it.